Hey guys, welcome back. This is all about uh, removing stones today, taking everything out and then mixing all this metal together. I'm assuming, I haven't looked at it, I'm assuming there's some 9 carat as well as 18 carat in these mixes. There's also some lemel or some bent sweep over there. We'll refine that and I'll show you exactly how we go about refining that. And um, we'll mix all of that together. And all right, first things first, let's start with removing some of the stones and uh, see what we got to work with. Starts with this guy. Look, um, all the respect due to everybody else out there making these rings, uh, I'm going to have to destroy this one now. To remove the center stone, I'm just going to cut the claw straight off. That's it. So we've got garnet out there, and then I've got some diamonds on the side here. Uh, I'm sure we all have a little area where we keep our burrows which are broken. I'm going to pop that into one of these universal vices. I've got a far thinner point over here, which means that I'm going to be able to get right to behind the stone. So let's try that again. Here we go. The mix between 18 carat and 9 carat is as follows. Typically, you have 24 carat, which is pure gold, then that gets mixed down with a little bit of copper to give it a strength, takes it down to 22 carat gold. From 22 carat gold, you mix it down with pure silver to 18 carat, and from 18 carat right down to 9 carat, you would use brass. Brass is a mixture of copper and zinc. If it contains more copper, the metal will be more red. And you know what, I'm going to put these things into the ultrasonic machine first before I do anything else, because that's pretty cringy. Alright, while that's running in the ultrasonic right there, I'm going to explain the different colours here. You know, when a, when, a, when a ring gets put, especially when jewellery gets put into a safe, it starts getting this sort of like coppery kind of tinge to it. It's a surface thing only, so you can just wipe it off, you can repolish it and it'll look great again. But they start picking up a bit of tarnish over there, and that's a telltale sign that this is not 18 carat. Now, 18 carat's not going to do that, 18 carat's sort of bright yellow to it, and it's uh, less, less likely to tarnish. So, visually, you can inspect these things and kind of make preliminary decisions on what 9 carat and what 18 carat you have in the batch. You're going to be working with these two particular carats. So, 18 carat over here, I've got a pile in the middle that's either silver or something else, it needs to be tested. And then I've got a pile of nine carat over here. This is possibly glued in as well. So again, I'm butchering this metal right now. If anybody made these jewelry pieces, I really apologize. Uh, it's not nice to see. So we just bend that open. Get that. We'll keep that for the customer. Pop that onto that pile. So again, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to take this apart. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off by cutting the shank, like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from the bottom and just cut right up to the stones. You can hear the stone meeting the blade. You know it's open and I'm going to bend it up in that direction. Thus exposing the stone, which I'll pop down with the other ones. Cut. As you can see as well, opposite sides to bend it open. If you don't do that, I mean, you can not do that, but if you don't do that, then you end up going into a spiral. It becomes like a little spiral, and towards the end, it becomes really difficult to pop them out. So I've got the one side, then the next, then the next, and then as I go along, it's open them up, the stones fall out, end of the story. That goes into the nine carat pile. So we have an assayed bar of here that came on a 9 carat chain and it has um, all the assay marks that you'd expect to be actually not I mean it's got a, it's got the lion on there but it's a funny looking lion it's got 95 on there it's got a date mark maker's mark and a star for some other reason now if this had been assayed in the UK you'd probably find that you'd have a little lion as a silver mark on here rather than all these other funny marks. So that's a bit dodgy. It might still be that just decorative marks from another country or something, but these are certainly not hallmarks from the UK. 
So I've got to test this, and uh, since it's gold plated, it's telling me it's silver, it's gold plated. Let's see what's underneath it. Convinced, you know, there's always red flags that you can look out for. Like, why is the silver mark not on there? It's stamped silver. Why does the line look funny? You know what I mean? Like, the SA office would definitely not stamp it looking like that. And I'm going to drop a little bit of this acid. According to the booklet, or the little disc. I'm expected to see a little yellow section there. So let's have a look and see if there's anything coming. It's giving me a yellow glow, so that indicates that this is 18 karat gold. I'm happy with that. So we'll leave that inside the 18 karat gold section right there. Next I'm going to do a 9 karat one. So we'll close that up nicely. This is the 9 carat bottle of acid. Just for fun, let's test this one over here. So I just cleared the surface slightly. I'm going to shake this up slightly and put a drop over there. There we go. Immediately, look at that. Can you see that? Super green, starts boiling. As expected, this is definitely not 9 carat gold or any other kind of gold. So we'll put that in the rubbish pile. And now I want to have a look at this silver bar. So we're going to go to the silver. That's it. It just doesn't look right, you know. I might have not gone deep enough, but let's have a look. I've already filed this at the bottom here with some sandpaper, so I'm going to put a drop over there. Let's see what the results are. It says, 9 carat fluid, silver fluid, translucent amber is not silver. Pale wishy washy red is 800 and deep red is 95. Translucent amber. Pale wishy washy red. Pale wishy washy red. Wishy washy red. Could that be it? No. Translucent amber, not silver. I just want to go for that one. But it's got some sort of green on the side as well. A deep red is 95 silver. Now, this is definitely not a deep red. That is not a deep red. It looks like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with my gut on this one and say this is definitely not silver. We're not going to throw any of this away, this is all going back to the customer to explain what the findings are. Alright, that's it. I've done the acid tests, I've done the uh, separation. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to melt that 9 carat into a block. And you know what, actually, before we melt the 9 carat in a block and then melt the 18 carat in a block, let's mix that 18 carat down to 9 carat to start off with, and then just melt once. That sounds like a good idea. I'm going to mix this 10, this 18 karat gold down to 9 karat. The way I'm going to do that is by, because this is 750, that's 375, 18 karat, 9. It's exactly double what 9 karat is in gold quantity. The simple way of doing this is literally weighing the 18 karat and then matching it up with brass. We're going to mix brass into this and we're going to take 10 grams of 18 karat gold and mix 10 grams of brass into it. Yeah. So that's 64 grams of 9 karat gold that's going to go into one block. But I'm not done yet. I've got the limo. These little bits of metal over here. Alright, here's what you do. You take any piece of old paper that you're not going to use anymore and you simply empty the contents in it. Just take a normal magnet. Run it through the mix like that, and you'll find that it picks up filings from the sandpaper or whatever. It all sticks to the magnet. The 
trick is to carry on until there's nothing. And if you're wondering how to get rid of that for magnet, you just use a piece of tape. The stuff's clean. Now I'm going to take some of my Easy Flow Flux. Put about a teaspoon of that in there. And roll it like this. Make sure that you mix the Easy Flow Flux nicely with the lemon. Now we're ready to cast. All right, let me take you through the whole melting process quickly. I'm going to be using one of these uh, Smith Torch extensions. Now this is quite a bit of metal to melt, so let's see how we do. Um, I'm using propane and oxygen for this. You see on the side here, I write the, uh, the metal down, so we never can contaminate the actual crucibles and that way if you write it in pencil it doesn't come off with the heat 